Arkansas basketball here with Tom Murphy on the Morning Rush, Arkansas Democrat Gazette, and Whole Hog Sports. Tom, what changed in the second half for this basketball team that was getting throttled in Knoxville and then made it a game, especially late? Hey, guys. Uh, I think um, they played better defense. I mean, Tennessee was not going to continue to shoot three-pointers like they did in the first half, which was a, a stunning display, but they are a decent three-point shooting team. And I think um, when you're up that many points, there's a tendency to you know think you got it. And if Arkansas had won that game, that would have been one of the all-timers. It may be the biggest comeback in Arkansas basketball history. We didn't have to go researching, but – it would have been stunning, and um, I just think you got to credit these guys for their their resolve. Um, a lot of teams when they're down twenty four, yeah, you know they just okay, you know we didn't have it today. And the second half, they they their mind comes off the game, and you can tell that Arkansas never disengaged emotionally or mentally and physically, and they rebounded better too. So I think it's a good sign that you remember last year's team they got down to Colgate handily they got down to uh Oral Roberts and and came back and won those tournament games so we know it's it's within their DNA to to come back in game and I wonder Adis Tony the timeline it seems kind of um, muddled a little bit when he's officially going to come back I don't know it seemed like Musk wasn't too confident for the SEC tournament but I wonder Tom your opinion on his impact and and how much they missed him on Saturday oh yeah especially defensively because he's the guy who who could have gone out and extended uh on you know on the wings on those three point shots and you know I don't know who you who he would have drawn could have been Vescovi could have been one of those quick quick guards but anyway it, it it's a difference maker uh to hear Eric Musselman talk after the game thought they could get 7 minutes or so out of Tony maybe each half and it didn't happen so I don't know if he was you know, playing some kind of a, a game, you know, with their next tournament opponent. But, um, you know, you don't want to play until he's good, and you got to think there's enough time that he can at least help you for the NCAA tournament. So I wouldn't push him. It's kind of like um, uh, Kentucky, you know, with Wheeler and Washington. I thought they would sit out the game here against Arkansas, but I guess they were to the point, you know, especially Wheeler, that he could go and, you know, they, they wanted those guys to be in shape for the tournament. And I, I would be the same with Audis Tony. I would make sure he's ready to go fully for the tournament. Tom, he's talking a moment ago about the comeback and in closing that gap. I, I remember Tom Hart referencing a hog stats tweet during the, during the broadcast. I think he said the record when Arkansas trailed by 21 or more at half was one and 28. And that the last time they had, come back the, the one win was over Houston in like 1988 or something I mean so it kind of puts in perspective what they almost did but uh why that's I guess now one and 29 when trailing by 21 or more at the half and in, in however many years that went back but uh so pretty pretty um uh nearly historic what they got done but I thought the play of the game Tom was the the pass from note trying to hit Davis underneath the basket when he was on the dribble Ziegler had closed the gap. It's kind of like a quarterback trying to feather one in there over the middle to the tight end. Pass was too long. If Davis even could have come up with it, he'd have been underneath the basket or out of bounds. But maybe if Note hangs on to that ball, I think that's a decision he would like to probably second guess and have back himself. Yeah, absolutely. That was a key part because, you know, you've, you've made this huge comeback, and I think it was 74-72 at that point, and you got the ball, and and – you know, as a fan, it dawns on you, holy smokes, you know, we've come all the way mm-hmm. back, and here we can tie or take the lead on this possession, and it was over in the blink of an eye. And sometimes in basketball, you make split decisions, uh, and the heat of the moment probably put a little bit too much mustard. But you know what? Ziegler's speed, it, it, he might be the fastest player in the SEC, probably impacted the amount of uh, force J.D. Note put on that pass because, oh, this guy could intercept. So you put a little bit more on it. And uh, I'm not sure if Devo, you know, Devo had to turn and look, so you can't be at top speed. If he'd been like a receiver and caught it over his shoulder or something, he might have caught it. But, yeah, that that one hurt. And and obviously, you know, they still were alive and had a chance. But if if you score there, then the pressure just swings wholly to Tennessee. And who knows what would have happened. 
Yeah, you know, Devo back in the lineup, uh, it kind of changes some things around with, with Tony's uh, un- not being available. You saw Kennedy Chandler at the point. Man, you just wonder if you had a guy like a Kennedy Chandler or some of these other point guards we've we've seen and P- Pinson and some of these other guys in the in the last few games. Um, that seems to be that one little thing that, that, that Arkansas might not have to, to maybe go all the way. I know a lot of people consider them a threat, but that's the – kind of the one Achilles heel from, from even an offensive and defensive standpoint. Yeah, I, I see your point, Tommy, and, and it's true. I mean, Note is a point guard, but he's a scoring point guard. And, um, you know, he, he's fast, but I, I don't think he's Zakai Ziegler fast or, nope. or Kennedy Chandler fast. Both those guys are freshmen, by the way. So Tennessee basketball is going to be solid in the coming years. But, um, yeah, and, 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 you know, that little stretch where uh, Devo was getting to the rim – it was a couple of games, and he and he hit two out of three three pointers in a couple of games. And you're like, if this Devo shows up at tournament time, it's it's an X factor um, because his shooting, you know, his his jump shot is not the smoothest, and it comes off at some awkward angles as a left hander. But uh, um, if if they could, if his minutes could be super valuable, um, the turnovers are way down. His shot selection is good, and he can get all the way to the goal and draw contact, they're going to be a different team in the NCAA tournament. Tom Murphy with us here on the Morning Rush. Tom, let's look at the SEC tournament starting on Wednesday. And Arkansas, I would anticipate, is going to get LSU. I think they're going to beat either the Missouri Tigers or Ole Miss. And Tommy and I, with talking about this earlier, you beat LSU twice already. That doesn't seem to be a great matchup for Arkansas heading into Friday. I completely agree. Not a good matchup. It was so hard to beat them last week um, here in town. Um, LSU came to battle, and they did, and um, I would only imagine that they're even hungrier. I mean, both of these teams are in the NCAA tournament, but there just seems to be, you know, an arch rivalry even aspect to this game. And the way Arkansas handled them, I mean, that was the, that was the season turner for Arkansas. Going down there, they were LSU was flying high. They were playing great defense. I think they had just smoked Florida on the road, and Arkansas won that game with the great closing. And they closed well against them the other day. But you know, from the rebounding standpoint, they would have to show up and rebound so much better. And that's why you'd want Audis Tony to be available for that game if you're Eric Molson. Arkansas is now a four seed in Joe Lenardi's latest bracketology. Houston lost to Memphis yesterday. That helped him out. Tom, yeah. where do you expect Arkansas in less than a week from now on Selection Sunday? What seed does Greg Gumbel call out on CBS for the Razorbacks? Yeah, it just, you know, if they go one and out, maybe a five. I, I really, it's hard for me to see them falling off the four if they win one game there. And then if they go on some run and, and win the tournament, uh, I think they can elevate themselves to a three. But, man, I would not I would not drain all my reserves to try to make the championship game or win this SEC tournament. I know it gets – I know with it, when, it, when it's within your sights and you can win a trophy, you know, teams seem, sometimes seem to just go for it. But if I'm Arkansas with Tony's status, you know, I, I play hard, I play to win, but man, I would not leave every every ounce I've got because you never know. You could be a Thursday team in the NCAA tournament. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I think if they win, if they if, let's say they play LSU, they beat LSU, I don't see how they fall off the four line. Yeah. But if you lose to LSU, now you've not lost one game, you've lost two in a row. Changes the narrative a little bit, and you've only played – would be you played last Saturday, then you're gonna play one, you, and then you wouldn't play till the tournament. You played would have played two games in thirteen days or something like that. I mean, um, you know, getting out of a rhythm too. You want to be healthy. It's trying to find that right balance in there. But I don't know that you really want to go into the tournament, you know, with two straight losses heading into you know what you hope to be a six game winning streak. Yeah, you know, you don't want to do that, but. And, and you know, maybe I overstated it a second ago. If you if you win three games in three days, uh, you have a few days to recover. These guys are young. I'm sure they could do that too. Uh, but um, you know, th- at this point, they they are only guaranteed two more games this season, mm-hmm. and that there's such a finality to saying you might only play two more games. So I'd like to see them play, you know, a bunch more games because uh, they've just been so fun. Their transformation. 
has been incredible to watch. And, um, you know, uh, I'll tell you, I'll tell you this, that Tennessee game where the officials not very aware of Jalen Williams and his block charge calls, because I, you say what you want, but Rick Barnes is complaining about the block charge calls here in favor. I think had an impact on that game. Yeah. And, you know, I just wonder also, and I agree, because, I mean, I think that first one they called uh, on Jalen, while it, while I believe it's a 50-50 call, I mean, he was he was moving there towards the end, but but he was moving laterally. Um, you know, it seemed like it was, it was almost uh, definitely going to be a block regardless of what happened there. But I think we're at that time of the year for the team, Tom, where, and, and not just Arkansas, for all the, you get that extra adrenaline shot here. You put the word tournament next to something, and I think, when there's a when there's a tournament at stake, whether it's the conference tournament or the NCAA tournament, the knees hurt a little less, the the, the elbows and the shoulders and the joints hurt a little less because that adrenaline fixes some things when you're playing in a tournament. It certainly does, and I, I just think you know they've got enough veterans on this team that uh, I think they're going to bring the team along with them. Defense travels, as they say, and Arkansas is playing a lot better defense. Um, and if Tony's there, I think the three point closeouts are, are a little stronger. So. Uh, I don't know. I think Arkansas has got the makings of a team that can do well in the NCAA tournament. Hey, real quick before you go, uh, baseball loses the first of three but wins the last two in a doubleheader Saturday to close out the series with Southeastern. Eyebrows raised any at this point? I, I don't think we're at a level of concern. Where where are you at with this baseball team as we're a week from this Friday uh, before you begin conference play on the 18th? Yeah, eyebrows raised. Yeah. Seven and three. You thought you thought for sure you could be nine and one, eight and two at this point. Uh, it's the hitting. It's it's the clutch hitting that you worry about. Now on the last game they started coming around, but that was against the, a bullpen of a team that probably doesn't have the depth of pitching that you're going to see the rest of the way for the large for the largest part. So um, you know, Jace Borfin starting to hit was was a big deal, uh, but but. I don't know. I'm, I'm concerned about the depth of their hitting, even though you take them individually and you think this is going to be a really good team, a hitting team and a power hitting team. And I do think when things warm up, the ball will be traveling out of Barham Walker Stadium more. So uh, my judgment is reserved. But right now, it you know, with last year as the standard, you know, I don't. There's no way they win every series in the conference this year. No Tom, way. Tom, appreciate the time as always, buddy. And well, we're changing up times a little bit this week. We'll preview the game not Thursday, but Friday with you this week. Sounds great. Talk to y'all then. All right, it might Tom. be over this season, but basketball is in full steam for both pros and college hoops. For all the latest odds, totals, player performance props to where the next fired coach is going to land, Bet Online is the number one spot for all your sports betting needs. Head over to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Use our promo code BELIEVE to get started. That's promo code B L E A V. And it's not just basketball. Bet Online is your source for hockey, boxing, and UFC odds, right to the Olympic coverage is the best in the business. From sports right down to your favorite Vegas casino games, Bet Online is your number one online wagering destination. Bet Online, the fastest and easiest way to wager on all your favorite sports and play your favorite games. Bet Online, where the game starts.